Welcome to the Personal Publishing Toolkit brought to you by Adobe Systems and GDT Softworks. From this toolkit, you'll learn a little bit about desktop publishing, have access to some valuable reference material, and get a chance to participate in a special software offer. There are five major areas on this CD-ROM. The Desktop Publishing Primer includes a brief overview of desktop publishing, as well as an in-depth module designed to step you through a basic desktop publishing project. The DTP Glossary is an extensive resource describing most publishing terms you will come across. Your Personal Publishing Toolkit section is an overview of Adobe and GDT's special offer of five software packages we've put together especially for you. The Toolkit will provide you with everything you need to get started in the world of desktop publishing. The software is worth over $400, but is available to unlock from this CD-ROM right now for only $99. Click on the How to Order button to find out more. If the content of this CD-ROM piques your interest in desktop publishing, the Reference Library section offers a complete year's worth of Mac User Magazine, as well as a bibliography of other books and resources on desktop publishing. Under Contact Information, you'll find out how to contact the companies involved in the CD for further information about their DTP tools and more. Many of the areas use QuickTime animations. You can use the Pause Play button at the bottom of the QuickTime window to control the presentation. Or drag the controller bar to the left to back up. To hear these instructions again, click on the Rewind button. To move from one area to another, simply click on the panel, button, or word that interests you. To bypass this introduction in the future, simply press the space bar after the DTP Primer and Toolkit starts. Welcome to the Desktop Publishing Primer. The Basics section gives you a brief overview, while the Process section takes you deeper into the world of desktop publishing. In the mid-80s, PageMaker for the Mac and the Apple LaserWriter revolutionized the world of publishing. Anyone with access to a desktop Macintosh could produce well-designed, professional-looking documents without the need for expensive typesetting equipment. The term desktop publishing, or DTP, was coined. Desktop publishing has evolved to the point that almost all the printed material you see around you, from newspapers and magazines to glossy brochures, is created on a desktop computer. The color style writer you have just purchased is one more step in that evolution, capable of producing finished output for home and business projects, as well as inexpensive proofs for high-end color design work. In the process section of this primer, we will demonstrate the basics of desktop design by following the creation of a simple document in a desktop publishing program. You can move to that section now. Now we'll go into detail about desktop publishing. The first step in creating, producing, and printing your desktop designs is to have a clear goal in mind before you begin. The object of this demo is a simple one creating a cover page for a CD catalog. Desktop publishing is all about placing type with images, usually referred to as graphics in desktop publishing, and moving these things around until they visually work together. Good design is as important in getting a message across as the message itself. The goal in designing your message is to lead the reader through the document from the most important information to the least, while keeping them interested in the whole piece. We are going to need a space for our type and graphics to come together. Since our final product will be a piece of paper with ink applied to its surface, we need to create that paper space inside the computer. We use layout or desktop publishing applications that create this workspace for us. For this example, we will use Adobe's Home Publisher program. Home Publisher is designed specifically to make desktop publishing easy for the non-professional. We opened Home Publisher by double-clicking its icon and creating a new document. It is at this point that we set the basic rules for our design. Paper size, the number of pages, the size of the margins, etc. Think carefully about these choices. They are very important to your final product. 
For example, if your document will only be printed on a desktop printer or copied on a photocopier, your choices are limited by the standard paper sizes that go through these machines. If you are commercially printing, you probably want to talk with your printer about the standard paper sheets that the printer will cut down to final size. But your most important consideration is what the people you are trying to reach, your readers or viewers, expect from the document you are creating. The CD catalog cover we're designing is for use by a sales team to carry around with product sheets. Because we don't need very many, we'll design this cover to print on the color style writer. The rest of the catalog exists in a different format, so we'll make this cover a one-page document. The standard paper size, 8.5 by 11 we're choosing, will be three-hole punched to fit in a binder, so we'll have to allow for a big margin on the left-hand side of the page. An inch should be plenty. The other margins will standardize at half an inch. The rest of the catalog exists in a different file, so we'll make this cover a one-page document. Our new project appears like a blank white area and is the work or document area referred to by both desktop and word processing applications. To us and the computer, this is the paper. What we put on this virtual paper will appear exactly where we've placed it when we print the document. The scope of graphics on a computer is virtually unlimited, from watercolor-like images to hard-edged graphics. You're really limited only by personal preference and taste. You'll be amazed at what this broad range of options does for your creativity. Designers, after settling on some graphic choices, will often confer with their peers, clients, or their mums in order to explore whether their design is working. Usually, you'll want to choose graphics that don't overwhelm your text information. In our case, we're creating a cover for a catalog in which we've organized many objects on a page. As a relief from the jumbled layout that follows, we'll give this cover a clean and simple look. We don't want to feature one of our CDs over any other, so we'll look for a generic image to get the message across. To place a graphic in Home Publisher, we choose Place Image from the File menu. We've built up a file of CD images to use with our product literature. Do we want a flying CD? CDs with shadows? Or how about the direct approach with this image here? Hmm, not much impact. Let's make it really big and crop it tight to the corner. Top? No, that's probably where we want our title. Hmm, let's put it down here in the corner. That's better. Since the color style writer doesn't print right to the edge of the page, let's keep it clean by putting a border all the way around the edge of the page. We do this by creating a rectangle with the Rectangle tool. We fill the rectangle with a color of none and color the border black. Now let's nudge the graphic down so it lines up with our border. Since this is a catalog for the fall season, maybe we'll want to pull a graphic in to reflect that season. Let's try some leaves up here where we'll be putting our heading. We'll size the graphic once we see how it works with our type. The images or graphics that we can add to our design can range from a scanned photograph, to clip art, to a picture that we've drawn on our own using a painting program such as Photoshop or Fractal Painter, or a drawing program such as Illustrator, Canvas or Freehand. Painting and drawing programs produce the two major types of computer graphics available. Painting programs produce graphics known as bitmap images. This is because they are made by coloring the rectangular grid of pixels on your computer screen. Scanned photographs and pictures are also part of the bitmap image family. Drawing programs produce the other type of computer graphics which are often referred to as vector-based images. Vector-based images are made up of mathematically defined curves and line segments called vectors. The image can be edited one vector at a time, together with other vectors as a group, or as an entire graphic. The advantage of vector graphics over bitmap graphics is that vector graphics can be easily resized or manipulated in other ways without producing the dreaded jaggies. Vector graphics also generally take up less disk space. Because of these two advantages, most commercial clip art is available in vector form. However, vector-based graphic formats cannot produce all types of graphics.
Some graphics, such as photographs and paintings, are more easily represented as bitmapped images. Scanned commercial photographs are also available as bitmapped images. When working with bitmapped images, keep in mind that they are made up of colored dots in a rectangle. The density of the dots determine the resolution of the image. It's a good idea to keep the resolution of bitmapped images in mind when you decide to print. For example, at 72 dots per inch or DPI, the image will look rough when printed on your color style writer, which is capable of 360 or 720 DPI. Also keep in mind that when you resize a bitmap image, you will adjust the resolution of the image. When you reduce a 2 inch 150 dpi graphic to 1 inch, you end up with a crisper looking 300 dpi image. However, if you expand the 2 inch graphic to 4 inches, you end up with a rougher looking 75 dpi image. Unlike bitmap graphics, the way vector graphics display in print is not dependent on resolution or dpi. Vector graphics will print or display at any resolution your monitor or printer is capable of. Bitmapped and vector graphic elements are stored in your computer in a variety of file formats. However, you'll find the most common bitmap formats are known as TIFF or PICT. Your color style writer can print these images beautifully. The most common vector format is known as EPS. With the addition of the PostScript driver that is part of the special software offer on this CD-ROM, your color style writer can print these just as well. Most scanned photos and painted images are stored as TIFF and PICT formats. Most clip art and the more expensive drawing programs use the EPS file format because of its capability in printing the same way at any size and at any resolution. The EPS format is also popular because it is portable between different computer platforms. More information regarding the specifics of these formats and what they mean to your work is available in the DTP glossary. There are many ways to arrange type information. It can be large as in a headline or heading, medium size to provide descriptive pointers in document, subheads, or the smaller type that is the nitty-gritty details of your information, which is often referred to as body copy. It can be arranged conventionally in paragraphs, or it can be used more like a graphic. Type falls into two main categories, serif and sans serif. Serif type has slabs or tails on the end of each character line, while sans serif type is without these extra flourishes. There are no hard and fast rules to follow when using serif or sans serif fonts, but two very general rules are these. Sans serif type is most easily read at very large and very small sizes, and in body copy, the horizontal tails on serif fonts seem to help guide the reader's eyes through a paragraph. Type further breaks down into type families, or what are usually called fonts in the computer world. Within each font, you will find type styles, the most common of which are regular, bold, italic, and bold italic. We gave you two very general rules for the use of serif and sans serif type, but here is one type rule you should live and die by. Unless you're really sure you want to create what's known as a ransom note effect, never mix more than two or three fonts in a document. Choose your fonts carefully. You'll find enough variety within these two or three font families to satisfy your needs. Like graphic types, there are two major font types bitmap fonts and vector fonts. Vector fonts are known as outline fonts. Nowadays, most people generally use outline fonts so they can have smooth text in any size. Your Macintosh and Color Style Writer support two font formats, TrueType and PostScript. Both formats are popular, though you'll find most publishing professionals used PostScript fonts from companies like Adobe. On the page, we'll start with the main heading for our design. The words, as well as the look of the font, should relate to the image we have chosen. The two relate to each other through similarity or by distinct contrast. The heading in this case doesn't have to be striking. The catalog cover is for conveying information rather than trying to grab people's attention. The physical relationship between our image and placement of type is also important. If we divide our page in thirds, the place where those thirds cross is a natural place for important information or design elements. 
the eye naturally rests there. There are two ways of getting type onto our page. By placing already written text, just as we place graphics, or by typing directly on the page. For our heading, we'll place our cursor here and type in our words. Now we'll choose a font, a style, and a size. Let's choose a font like Myriad Headline from the Adobe Wild Type collection available on this CD for our heading. As the word headline in the name suggests, it is a clean sans serif font that will be easy to read at a fairly large size. As for the size, experimentation is the best way to discover what works with the images you have chosen and how the type relates to your page as a whole. Now that we have our heading, we'll place some type that we always include on the cover of our catalogs. This is how you would usually bring in text that had been written for a newsletter or brochure, for example. We draw an object for the text to fill, then choose Place Text and find the appropriate file to import. Let's stay in the Myriad Type family and make this descriptive text Myriad Tilt. It can't be so big that it overwhelms our heading, but it doesn't have to be too small either. Let's space it out with some line spacing. Let's resize these leaves to work better with our type. There. Now, is anything missing? Understanding a little bit about color helps enormously when faced with the overwhelming choice that you have when designing in color on the computer. The color wheel shows how different colors relate to each other and helps you make the right decision when combining color. The three main colors on the wheel are known as the subtractive primary colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow. All other colors on the wheel are combinations of these three. Combining colors that are two or three colors apart on the wheel creates a bold effect. The resulting combinations are called contrasting colors. An even stronger effect is created by combining the colors exactly opposite each other on the wheel. These are called complementary colors. Colors that are adjacent on the wheel are related to each other and combined create a pleasing effect. Apart from our two very colorful images, we haven't yet applied any color to our page. The question is, does it need it? Is the image already colorful enough? The color of the CD image and the leaves are close together on the color wheel. Should we pick up these golds for our type, or would a complementary blue or purple provide better contrast? Let's try the type in a dark blue. Hmm, not bad. Would it be stronger if we put a blue bar behind our main heading and had the type in white? This is called reverse type because it's reversed out of the background. Hey, that's pretty good. Let's go with it. Now we have a computer representation of our paper established. We have put graphic elements onto this paper and have added words to further describe or communicate the message we want to deliver with this. The Color Style Writer, because of its excellent color handling capabilities, can effectively interpret this and produce what is called hard copy when we choose Print from the File menu. You now have a high quality print that our sales force can use. If we were commercially printing this page, we would have an excellent proof print that you can use to evaluate your work before taking it to the printer for final output. For reports or presentations, the Color Style Writer can also print on premium and glossy coated paper, back print film or transparency for its final output. Its capabilities are good enough for virtually all uses. These steps just touch the surface of the design and printing process. There are dozens of books and periodicals published that can offer you good support and possible solutions for your print communication needs. Some of these are listed in the Reference Library's bibliography. The Reference Library also contains an electronic copy of a full year's worth of MacUser magazine, which contains columns on design and desktop publishing, as well as reviews of many of the tools that are available. 
If you come across a confusing term, don't forget the DTP glossary. The glossary contains definitions and animations that will help you further understand the basics of desktop publishing on the computer. The primer is now complete. You can replay the process section by clicking on its button or any part of it by clicking on a title. Or you can go to anywhere else in the DTP primer and toolkit. Have fun exploring! Click on any of these boxes for an introduction to these great PostScript publishing software packages. Their total value is $405, but we're offering them to you for just $99. To order, click on the How to Order button on the left. The makers of PageMaker have created the perfect solution for every home or office publishing job. Adobe Home Publisher Deluxe is the complete publishing package that lets you turn out professional quality publications without any desktop publishing experience. Breakthrough intelligent templates guide you through simple design choices, then automatically create a document tailored to your needs. Over 50 templates are provided for fast, automatic solutions to newsletters, brochures, flyers, labels, calendars, and lots more. With Adobe Home Publisher's built-in word processor, spell checker, and thesaurus, you can do all your writing and editing without leaving the program. In just minutes, your home or business documents are ready to print. This deluxe edition also includes over 2,000 clip art images. Get ready to discover Adobe Art Explorer, the super painting and drawing program with tons of cool art. Start with one of 24 background scenes, add wacky character stamps, and go crazy with way cool tools. Grab a blank page, mix and match worlds, and build wild new creatures. Adobe Art Explorer comes with lots of painting and drawing tools, hundreds of stampable characters and props, fun fonts and stencils, and wacky sounds and icons to make the experience fun for all ages. It's 100% kit approved. PostScript is a page description language. It tells your printer how to format the information it receives from your computer and how to print it out on a page. PostScript was developed by Adobe as a standard for desktop publishing and has become the industry standard for computer printing. Normally, to take advantage of PostScript's capabilities and portability, you would require a printer that can interpret PostScript, such as Apple's line of laser printers, and an application that can produce PostScript graphics and documents, such as Adobe's PageMaker or Illustrator. These two elements in combination are currently driving the desktop publishing and computer graphics industries, since they represent the most powerful tools available. Off the shelf, your color style writer does not have PostScript built in. However, StyleScript provides your color style writer with genuine Adobe Level 2 PostScript capability. With StyleScript, your color style writer will have the same capabilities as much more expensive printers, including the ability to print vector-based graphics clearly without jaggies. You'll find it essential for printing encapsulated PostScript or EPS files exported from programs like Adobe Illustrator, for printing commercial clip art, which is often saved in EPS format, and for printing personal clip art, such as corporate logos. Besides high-quality personal output, StyleScript can also turn your color style writer into an inexpensive proofing machine. Because your color style writer will have genuine PostScript capabilities, you'll be able to accurately proof separations and composites before you output to a more expensive PostScript image setter at a service bureau. While you're getting creative with Home Publisher's layout capabilities, jazz up your work with Adobe's WildType. WildType is a collection of one-of-a-kind typefaces that are perfect for the home, office, or classroom. The package includes 14 Adobe Originals typefaces of animals, tools, and more, plus Adobe Type Manager software. Why be boring when you can be wild? Image Club has provided 75 very high-quality clip art images. 
Use them to enhance your correspondence, create a letterhead for your company, or spice up an announcement. Clipart has become a staple in desktop publishing, and Image Club is leading the pack in creating useful, high-quality images for graphic design and desktop publishing. Their collections of images and photos are setting the standard in today's design. Click on the Mac User Editorial and Acrobat Reader icons to find out more about them. You can also read the bibliography list by scrolling through it and save it to disk. Adobe has put an end to the complexity involved in viewing published documents between different computers or even across different computer platforms. Acrobat Reader will allow you to read and print files saved in Acrobat format. Acrobat formatted files can be easily moved between different computers while maintaining all the fonts and formatting of the original document. Acrobat Reader will allow you to read the Mac User Editorial files and is installed automatically with the Mac User Editorial. To install just the Acrobat Reader, click on the Acrobat checkbox on the upper right. This CD contains 12 issues of Mac User magazine, courtesy of Mac User. Here's a handy resource for you to turn to if you have any questions about your Macintosh computer, your peripherals, and your software. It's an Acrobat format and is easily searchable. With the Mac User editorial, it's like having a knowledgeable friend you can turn to any time of the day or night. To install the Mac User editorial, click on the Mac User checkbox on the upper right. Please note that installing Mac User will also install Acrobat Reader so you can read the files. Installation will take place when you quit from this CD-ROM. We'd like to give you a free issue of Mac User. That's right, free with no obligation. With Mac User, you'll gain access to important information that will help you make the right Mac related decisions, learn valuable tips and techniques to optimize your system's performance, discover what software or hardware can save you money, and more. And if you decide to subscribe, we'll throw in the amazing Mac Mega Pack CD ROM, absolutely free. Call us now or visit us on the World Wide Web. Give it a try. You have nothing to lose. Uh-oh.